Good morning, good morning. God bless you, God bless you. Come on in the room, like and share, love and share. Welcome to another extension of Cyber Sunday School, coming from the beautiful pastor study of the Mount Calvary Community Church, the biggest little church in Omaha, Nebraska. We are delighted always to be in your homes, your automobiles, wherever you kind of tune in and share the word of the Lord with us. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Father, we thank you for these, your people who've assembled in this digital space. We pray, Father, that the word will go forth and accomplish where to it is set. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. Thank the Lord. Grab your Bibles. And while you grab your Bibles, like, love, and share this broadcast and let people know that Mount Calvary is on the air. Today's lesson this morning is, praise God, it was just on your screen, the laws of justice and mercy. Grab your Bibles. We're looking at Exodus, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 12, the laws of justice and mercy. The laws of justice and mercy. Again, Exodus, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 12 verse number 12. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me grab, grab your Bibles and let's go right into our lesson for today. Amen. God bless you, T. Smith. We're so glad to have you in this space with us always. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, so again, this is Exodus, the 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 12. And we're going to look at it this morning. Uh, good grief. All right, here we go. All right. I think we got it. Praise the Lord. Let me get the right translation going. All right. So, the aim for change today, by the end of this lesson, God bless you, uh, Roderick Taylor. By the end of the lesson, we'll remember that God expects believers to care for others aspire to be impartial in showing justice and mercy and practice helping those who are in need. So let's go to the in focus story and then we'll go to the word of the Lord. Uh, Tony had lived in her neighborhood for 10 years and she tried to take an active role in helping the neighborhood be a safe and welcoming place. One afternoon while resting on her front porch Tony's neighbor Binta stopped by to chat. Always a bean to want to come by and talk to you, Dana. Uh, so when when are you going to bring your family over for dinner with us? Tony asked. Uh, we really do need to return the favor for that delicious ablo and grilled chicken you made for us last week. Binta smiled. I hope we can join you soon, my friend. But this week, I'm too busy with business troubles. Binta explained that she was planning to rent a local storefront to sell furniture and antiques. And however, she was a little uncomfortable with her con with her contract for the lease agreement. English wasn't Benta's first language, so some of the contract wording was difficult for her to understand. So Tony agrees to take a look at the lease paperwork with her. After reviewing the paperwork, Tony discovered that several of the rules in the lease were unusual and seemed to favor the landlord. She suspected that the landlord was trying to take advantage of Binta, so Tony worked with Binta to renegotiate the lease so that the terms were reasonable. The following week, Binta happily reported that the landlord had agreed to the new terms. She thanked Tony with a big hug. Thanks for looking out. You are truly a friend. There you go, Betty White again. Thank you for being a friend. Uh, question is, how do you how do you help those around you who are new to your area or new to your country? How do you help people who are just new to you? Um, so that's something for you to think about. All right, so let's go to the word of the Lord. Uh, Exodus 23rd chapter again. The focus verses are verses 2 and 3, but listen as we read from the God's Word translation. The Lord continued, which lets us know that there was a previous discussion before this took place. You must never spread false rumors. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't join forces with wicked people by giving false testimony. Verse 2, never follow a crowd into doing wrong. When you testify in court, don't side with the majority to pervert justice. 
never give special favors to poor people in court. Whenever you come across your enemy's ox or donkey wandering loose, be sure to take it back. Whenever you see that the donkey of someone who hates you has collapsed under its load, don't leave it there. Be sure to help him with his animal. I'm slowing down so you can hear this reading today. You know, today would be don't drive past people who are broke down on the side of the road, especially if you know them. Get out your car and help them. <coughs> don't leave them there. Verse six, never deny justice to poor people in court. Verse seven, avoid telling lies. Don't kill innocent or honest people because I will never declare guilty people innocent. God bless you, Mother Miles. Verse eight, never take bribes because bribes blind those who can see and deny justice to those who are in the right. Never oppress foreigners. You know what it's like to be foreigners because you were foreigners when you were in Egypt. Then he says in verse six, for six years you may plant crops in your fields and harvest them. But in the seventh year, you must leave the land unplowed and unused. In that way, the poor among you, the poor among your people will have food to eat. And wild animals may eat what the poor people leave. You must do the same with your vineyards and your olive groves. Verse 12 in our climax. For six days you will do your work, but on the seventh day you must not work. Then your, your ox and your donkey can rest. The slaves born in your household and foreigners will also be refreshed. So far, the scripture. Keep in mind the focus of passage of scripture is found in verses 2 and 3. From the King James, it reads it like this. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment, neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. All right. So far, the scripture. So uh, the people, places, and times of our lesson uh, this morning, uh, let's deal with uh, two things. Perjury and law codes, perjury and law codes. All right, so it, it relates to perjury. The Ten Commandments clearly state God's law against false witness. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Elaborating from this premise, good morning, Minister Anderson. Uh, the law of Moses then reiterates how negatively God feels towards lying. A lying tongue is one of the few things that the Lord hates. And so today, before witnesses may testify during the trial, they place their hands on the Bible here in the United States and they swear an oath to tell the truth, the whole truth, right? And nothing but the truth. This, this then reinforces the law of perjury. And if violated and proven that one has lied under oath, it carries a serious penalty. There are times when persons have perjured themselves on the witness stand and have gotten more time than the person that they were lying for. <laughs> the law of perjury again carries a serious penalty. So in non-legal settings the justice principle of speaking truthfully 
extends then to gossip and to slander. Just don't lie. Not only not in court, don't lie in life. So then the law codes, today's scripture primarily focuses on the arena of law called social justice legislation. This weekend, we're celebrating uh, the birthday of our civil rights advocate and pioneer uh, patriarch uh, in the person of the Reverend Dr. Michael King, later renamed Martin Luther King Jr. He was a social justice civil rights pioneer. So, the first set of judicial imperatives is addressed to witness in a legal proceeding. These are given as examples of the types of things that constitute injustice which are to be avoided, especially under penalty of judgment. So, so the list was not meant to be exhaustive, and, and there are many other similar situations that would involve the same principles of not only avoiding injustice, but also doing justice. Many ancient law codes, including the Law of Moses, should not be read as a full listing of society's do's and don'ts. They are examples of, of, of wise standards of justice. Judges then familiarize themselves uh, and <clears throat> meet out judgment from these laws to give a verdict in particular situations. Those of us who serve as priests and prophets, we also, in this setting, should know the law so that we could wisely uh, meet out punishment according to the law, according to the code found in the canon, the scriptures. All right? So let's go to the background. The covenant code of Exodus, the 20th chapter, also known as the book of the covenant, follows and expands on the Decalogue. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And we follow up with that, with a Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep thy law. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep thy law. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. I'm just going skipping through. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep thy law. Bear, do not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep thy law. The, this is the Decalogue, Deca 10, the Ten Commandments. This is the law that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. So this was not a one-way relationship because Israel had readily agreed. They agreed uh, to obey God's law. Lord, have mercy upon us. Incline our hearts to keep thy law. It, it was their voluntary agreement to follow and obey God that caused Israel to suffer judgment when they disobey these covenant laws. You with me? So implicit in any law forbidding something is a judgment then for disobedience. Because of this justice and mercy infusing uh, God's character and his covenant code, God's anger then was kindled when his people engaged in injustice and did not show mercy 
to others. You know, you want mercy from God, but you're not willing to extend mercy to your fellow man. So let's look at the in-depth. We have four parts to go through, um, and they are the five judicial imperatives, uh, two case studies, five more judicial uh, imperatives, and then the Sabbath year, which was the concluding verses uh, 10 through 12, about the six years laboring, the seventh year resting, six days laboring, the seventh day you rest according to the law. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the seventh, the Sabbath, the seventh, to keep it holy. That also includes every seven years to keep it holy. For a whole year, you're to be holy. I would say, and go off, because half of you can't be holy for four days, <laughs> let alone 365 on that Sabbath year. Anyway, all right, let's go to the Five judicial imperatives. This is verses 1 through verse 3. God bless you, Minister Beth. Uh, lying is forbidden. Lying is forbidden in two legal situations. In bringing false accusation, a false report, and then while acting as a witness in a trial. This is reiterated in popular opinion. Going along with the multitude does not protect you when you do evil. Especially if it causes you to lie and pervert justice. Not only must a, a just person not follow the crowd, but also he or she must be willing to speak out against it. While many Old Testament laws encourage the Israelites to show kindness to the poor, God also cautions them not to automatically show partiality for a poor person just because he or she is poor. A normal, flawed human system might not give a poor person a fair shake, but the pendulum should not swing the other way. The just child of God must be equitable to everyone, whether they are poor, whether they are rich, whether they are connected, or whether they are disconnected. You with me? Amen. So then, then the question that is asked, how do, you, how do your stereotypes of the poor and the wealthy affect how you view them? How do your stereotypes affect how you view the poor man or the rich man? Then let's go to the case studies, two case studies, verses four through six. The just person is, a, is to help a man whose donkey is strayed, even if that person is an enemy. Yeah, equitable. That would be the same equal rights for all. We have the same skill set. We should be made to pay the same wages. Equitable. It should not matter if I'm a man and, and the other person is a woman or one person is black, the other one is, is white. Equitable means if we work the same job and, and, and we have the same skill set, the same education levels, our complexion, our gender should not matter. So then equitable, equability should be extended to everyone. All right. So um, the, the just person is to help a man whose donkey has, has, has strayed. Even, again, if this person was an enemy. If you were driving down the streets of Omaha and, and, and you saw your enemy stuck in a ditch, do not drive by them. And say, child, guess who I saw? <laughs> you know, God don't like ugly. No, um, you're supposed to help them even when they're enemies. Through the ages, this has been the testimony that have often won converts because they saw God's people being kind, being just, even to people who hate them. 
Similarly, the just person must also help a person whose donkey has fallen under the weight of a load, even if that person is an enemy. The parable of the Good Samaritan in the New Testament is a perfect example of this. Uh, the just person must offer help in every situation. Good morning, uh, Samisha Palmer. I hope I'm saying it right. God bless you for tuning in. Um, 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 so uh, every situation, we must be able to offer assistance. Whether the person needs help is a friend or whether they are a frenemy or a foe. Um, here's another question for you to just ponder. When have you had an opportunity to help your enemy? When have you had an opportunity to help your enemy? All right, let's move on. Five more judicial imperatives, verses seven through nine. So just as one should not deny justice to a rich person just because he or she is rich, right? So the, the just person must not deny justice to a poor person just because they're poor. God bless you, Annie. A, a judge must never falsely charge anyone and must never put an innocent person to death. Particularly when it comes to matters of life and death, God specifically will not excuse any with innocent blood, but will himself judge the unjust judge. I think Solomon speaks to this. God will bring every work into judgment in every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Sadly, bribing judges and other officials is a sin. And that continues today. No one in a position of authority should ever take a bribe. Bribes blind the judges to justice when instead judges are to be blind to partiality. As the Israelites were once oppressed as strangers in this place, this uh, place they were carried away to, which was Egypt in this setting, they are to likewise never oppress strangers in their own land. While this injunction is likely spoken specifically to judges, the guidance then applies to any just follower of the Lord. No one, especially a personal trial, should be judged in light of their nationality, nor in light of their ethnicity. Then let's go to the last part, the Sabbath year, verses 10 through 12. The Sabbath year. Finally, here, God institutes the practice of a Sabbath year that provides many righteous outcomes. Uh, besides the obvious rest for the farmer, a Sabbath year also allows the animals and the land to rest. It's like a reset that the Lord has put in place for us, showing them uh, respect. During this rest period, the farmers are compelled to rely on the grace of God to get by, which should strengthen their faith. The Sabbath year also provides food to the poor who are allowed to reap freely of vineyards, olive groves during this Sabbath year. So when the Sabbath year comes and, and a foreigner comes on your land to pick your collard greens and your uh, apples and your oranges. Don't pull out your shotgun and command them get off your land. This is the time where the Lord freely allows strangers to come and glean from your vineyard. You are not to, to glean in this Sabbath year yourself. So this is to provide food for the poor. All right. So a Sabbath year is, is to proceed much like a Sabbath day would. God's just provision provides rest for everyone. His people, their lands, their animals, their servants, and even the foreigners in their midst. Um, the question is asked then, what would a Sabbath year 
look like among God's people today. Yes, yes, uh, uh, Sister Mars, his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. So I, I, one, one hears uh, a lot about social justice in the news. And it is, is only natural for victims of injustice to cry out for justice in every aspect of society. Studying the scripture that pertains to social justice presents a clear picture of what it means for God's people to embody justice in society and how they are to uh, both avoid injustice and exercise justice. This clear picture must be preserved in a world where so many believe that only political solutions or new laws will fulfill God's requirements for justice. Governments, yes, are capable of doing things that individuals cannot. They, as they enact sweeping laws that shape our perspectives and begin to change the way we treat each other. But according to God's word, individuals are always responsible for their own actions and their own decisions. Even governments are made up of individuals and each will give an account of every decision, of every bill that they've brought before uh, to be legislated and every vote that they've taken on the Senate or the House floor, whether their decision was just or unjust. They are responsible in this case, if the, if the Supreme Court rules against the people unjustly, the blood from that situation is on the hands of those who voted for that person to get on the on the uh, to get a seat on the court. Every decision, whether it was just or whether it was unjust, you know, the same Supreme Court that says you cannot have an abortion, young lady, but the same Supreme Court says. Um, you don't have to wear masks. Your employers cannot force you to wear masks on the job or to get vaccinated to maintain your employment. But I can tell you that you cannot have an abortion. So, so, so even governments have to give an account for every decision whether it's just, whether it was unjust. Ultimately, no one gets excused. God says, God says, I will require blood if an innocent person is put to death. I will not excuse them for inflicting or for enabling injustice. So, so even though today's believers, we live in this new covenant, as we, are, we often hear about, I, I, I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. God's holy character and standards have not changed, ladies and gentlemen. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He still does not tolerate injustice. I don't care how many times you say you under this new covenant. He's the same yesterday, the, today, and forever. He still calls his people to be holy. He still calls us to come out from among them and be ye separated, saith the Lord. He, he, he still demands because you are a holy generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you're supposed to show forth praises. Because I called you out of darkness and brought you into this marvelous light. So the challenge for believers today is to correct injustices when they are found and to act justly even when there is compelling reason or temptation to do otherwise. We are not out of we are not out of word. We are simply out of time. Stick around the next few minutes for our eleven o'clock worship service. We'll be preaching from this subject. 
Stand up for what's right. Stand up for what's right. Right at 11 o'clock, following the same pattern that we went through in our Sunday school lesson this morning. God bless you. We love you. May heaven smile upon you. Be gracious unto you. And may the Lord give you his peace. Sow a seed today. The website information is there on your screen, www.m3comaha.org, www.m3comaha.org, or you can go to our cash app right now, dollar sign M3C5112. We'll see you at the top of the hour for our Cyber Morning Worship Service. Glory to God.